Kugelpanzer. The Kugelpanzer, translated to ball tank, was one of the strangest German fighting vehicles developed during World War II. The history and functionality of this light reconnaissance craft are nearly a complete mystery, and after the war ended, only one prototype was ever found. The Third Reich engineers and scientists were pioneers in many technological innovations that are still used today. In a span of 10 years, they designed a significant amount of military technology, but some projects remain a secret. The Kugelpanzer is one of them. Little is known about the rolling vehicle's origin or functionality. The only Kugelpanzer ever found was believed to have been shipped to Japan and was captured by the Russian army in Manchuria during the 1945 August Offensive. Plated with a 5mm armor, the tank may have been armed with a light machine gun that could provide defensive fire while rolling. It was manufactured by the Krupp Corporation to perform as a one-man scouting vehicle, probably equipped with a German MG-34 or 42. Or, if used by the Japanese, it would have possibly had a Type 96 machine gun mounted below the minuscule vision slit of the aircraft. Some experts have claimed that the Kugelpanzer may have been inspired by the incomplete World War I design of the Treffeswagen, a German tank that used two large wheels of more than two meters in diameter. Its engine was removed, and no one knows what it's made of. The Russians keep it a closely guarded secret, and it's unknown if the Kugelpanzer was even used in combat. The largely unstudied Kugelpanzer is currently held at the Russian Kubinka Museum as item 37, its original olive green paint, now a dark German gray. The Kugelpanzer's design still remains one of the largest mysteries in tank history. The Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka The Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka Cherry Blossom was a last-ditch rocket-powered kamikaze plane deployed by Japan near the end of World War II. Carried into battle underneath a Mitsubishi G4M2E Model 24J bomber, the one-man piloted flying bomb would fire three powerful engines and plow into U.S. naval ships, prompting a more lethal detonation than the traditional kamikaze suicide attacks of Japanese pilots. As the war in the Pacific slowly turned the tide to the American Army and Marines, the Japanese resorted to extreme measures to inflict maximum damage on any troops advancing towards the last islands protecting the Sea of Japan. Thus, the kamikaze suicide pilots became a source of national pride and of utmost importance to the Japanese military. It is said that when the Mongols attempted to invade Japan in the late 13th century, the kami, or Japanese gods, intervened by sending two powerful typhoons that destroyed the Mongol navy. Consequently, the word kamikaze was adopted by Japanese pilots who would strike their vehicles into American warships as a last act of faith. Initially, the attacks were successful and significantly diminished American morale. Still, as World War II was coming to an end, the surprise factor had disappeared, and kamikaze attacks no longer had the same effect. The Japanese then developed the MXY-7 Oka, a one-man piloted flying bomb carried into battle underneath the Mitsubishi G4M2E Model 24J bomber. After being dropped, Oka pilots would glide their aircraft toward U.S. naval ships and fire three solid fuel rocket engines, reaching speeds up to 620 miles per hour before plowing into their target and detonating a 2,646-pound warhead. Only seven American ships were hit by the Oka, and most of these attacks happened during the Battle of Okinawa in April of 1945. Of the more than 300 Oka built, only 74 took to the skies, and 56 were destroyed before reaching their intended targets. Submarine and cave-launched versions of the Oka were planned, but never completed before the end of the war. American sailors referred to this lethal explosive aircraft with the Japanese word baka, which means foolish or idiotic. Wunderwaffe Wind Cannon Nearing defeat in World War II, the hope that a Wunderwaffe superweapon could turn the tide drove outlandish German projects. One of these included a compressed air wind cannon that could fire a blast equivalent to a small shell at invading aircraft. It is believed that it was only deployed one time during the war. As Germany began to lose the war on all fronts, desperate measures included creating powerful weapons that would prove an advantage over the Allied forces. These top-secret weapons were referred to as Wunderwaffe by the National Socialist Propaganda Ministry. Although most of them never went past the prototype stage due to a shortage of fossil fuels and manpower, some did see the light. Examples include the Messerschmitt Me-262 jet fighter, the Arado AR-234 bomber, the colossal Gustav cannon, and the infamous V-2 rocket. One of the wonder weapons that Germany could not wait to mass-produce was a compressed air wind cannon that could fire a blast equivalent to a small shell on invading aircraft. 
The bizarre cannon was triggered by an explosion of hydrogen and oxygen in a sharply bent breach. Tests showed that the invisible projectile could shatter a wooden board at a distance of up to 650 feet. A single wind cannon was reportedly deployed on a bridge across the Elba, but it proved ineffective and made for a large target for enemy combatants. Spherical bomb, surface torpedo. The idea of a bouncing bomb was first described by British engineer Barnes Wallace in a 1942 paper titled Spherical Bomb, Surface Torpedo. One such bomb, codenamed Upkeep, was developed and tested with the purpose of destroying German hydroelectric dams. The cylindrical device breached two dams during World War II, but its unconventional delivery quickly backfired. The upkeep was a cylindrical weapon that needed to be dropped at 232 miles per hour, 60 feet above the water. 500 revolutions per minute of backspin were added so that the bomb would skip across the surface before sinking and exploding at the dam walls. If successful, the bomb would hit its target, sink, and immediately explode underwater like a depth charge. Two versions of the bomb were developed, a larger one for dams and a smaller one for vehicles. They were codenamed Upkeep and Highball. The only British aircraft capable of carrying an upkeep bomb were modified Avro Lancaster heavy bombers. The peculiar explosive device attracted the attention of the British Army for the possibilities it showed in destroying the German battleship Tirpitz, moored in Norwegian fjords. Previous Allied attempts at destroying German hydroelectric dams with conventional bombing methods were ineffective, as torpedo nets rendered underwater attacks useless. But if a device, like the bouncing bomb, could breach the initial line of defense and then explode near the dam, the outcome would be different. Tests were conducted in the fall of 1942 with remarkable success. In one of the tests, a 280-pound upkeep bomb destroyed a dam at Nantegro, Wales, without complications. During Operation Chastise in May of 1943, the bombs breached two Ruhr Valley dams, but their delivery resulted in a high Royal Air Force casualty rate. Of the 20 aircraft that participated in the operation, only eight made it back to England, and 53 crewmen lost their lives. The aircraft needed to fly very close to the water to drop the ordnance and quickly retract as high as possible before being exposed to enemy fire. The upkeep bombs were never used again during the war. Krumlauf The German Krumlauf was a bent barrel modification that could be added as an attachment to the Sturmgewehr 44 to increase the defense and effectiveness of German infantry units. It was produced in several models and widely deployed during World War II but their lifespan and functionality eventually proved counterproductive. The Sturmgewehr 44, or STG-44, was one of the last battlefield innovations handed to the German infantry alongside the highly effective camouflage patterns used by the Panzer Grenadiers. It was the first assault rifle ever created, planned to be the intermediate weapon between a rifle and a submachine gun. To further increase its lethality, the Krumlauf was added to it. The bent barrel included a periscope that allowed German soldiers to shoot from safe positions around corners and over cover. It was produced in versions with 30, 45, 60, and 90 degree bends, although the 30 and the 45 degree models were the only ones widely deployed for combat. Bullets fired from the Krumlauf had a tendency to shatter in a shotgun effect, and the barrel typically failed after 300 rounds, giving it a brief lifespan. This effect was caused by the amount of stress put on the barrel and the bullets due to the extreme curvature. Designers attempted to fix the issue by drilling small vent holes into the barrel to reduce pressure and recoil, but then the gases clouded the optics, which forced the designers to incorporate a triangular shield to keep the optics intact. A tank model that could cover the vehicle's blind spots and defend against close-range infantry assaults was also developed in small numbers. The tank crews would use STG-44s with 90-degree barrels and their shields to take down approaching enemy infantry. When the war ended, the Allies attempted to incorporate these innovations into their weapons, with little success. The Americans tried the barrel with the grease gun and the M1A1 carbine, while the Soviets did the same with their PPSH submachine guns. The results were the same on all fronts. <laughs> <laughs>